Uh, we're here in, in Lakey, Texas, and I'm with the builder and the homeowner, Ron and Ralph. And uh, we're up on the top of a hill where they've built this beautiful home. They built it out of Faz Wall Block and uh, have been working together as a team. And I, I would love to hear the story. Just how did you have the vision for this house, Ralph? What, where did it come from? Well, we wanted to build something that was sustainable, that we could live in off the grid for some period of time. I uh, we went with the fast wall block. Uh, the one, they're one foot thick. Uh, they were also pre-insulated, so we didn't have to worry about you know, the insulation step. And we were already familiar with dry stack because we dry stacked our concrete, the CMU block. So we were already familiar with dry stacking and running lines and popping lines and keeping things straight. So it wasn't a big jump for us. Yeah, I love the stacking. The stacking went up great. You know, yeah. Once you got all the electrical in there and everything, got all that figured out. It was, yeah, went up quick. Any trouble cutting it or any trouble Not filling even. it? Not even. No. Filling it, we did it by hand. But I wanted. It to, was. You know, I wanted. I wanted to make sure to mention that that yeah, the, these two fellas hand filled these uh, the walls, the Fazwell block, up to eight feet. So two different pours, but really, yeah. one whole the whole thing was a long pouring process. But yeah, right. <laughs> pretty, right. pretty remarkable to yeah. be able to do that. Uh, well, most people use a boom truck or mm -hmm. a line pump. You guys yeah, are up you here just, you know, work yourself. Work, you know. Well, this area, <laughs> yeah, it was just this area is so remote. It would have been so expensive to get a uh, pump truck or a line truck in here. Uh, and then I'm not even sure this they would allow the truck in this area. It's very rough. I might I so might mention they're both Texans too. Oh, oh yeah. So that says mm -hmm. that says a lot in itself. <laughs> the ability to do it yourself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean it. I think every we all on the concrete block we poured it four feet interval, we did four foot stages. We felt that was the safest. We went up to twelve feet, so we poured four foot stages. And see, we did the same thing with the fast wall block. Mm -hmm. Felt it was very safe that way. And once you start stacking block again, your four, four feet of your wall is very stable. Yeah. It's all tied together with rebar, and I don't think we lost a lot of structural integrity that no, way. Not even. Can you tell me a little bit about your your vision for how you sighted the house, why you sighted it the way you did? Mm -hmm. You're working yeah. with all this beautiful natural area mm -hmm. out here. If you could just kind of, it really works well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just the way you've, you've mm -hmm. put the whole thing together. What kind of considerations did you have in mind when you did well, this planning? Well, just planning. This reading, uh, I read Daniel Kiris's book, Passive Solar Home. That was a very important book for me. I read some other books, which I can't remember the titles of now, that also little tidbits of information about siding a home. One of the things we didn't do was want to build on top of the hill and, and you know, affecting other people's views of this beautiful area. And uh, we wanted to mirror the way these hills, you can't see them from this view, but these hills kind of stair-step down, and that's what the house does. If you look at a different angle, it stair-steps down the hill. Uh, we wanted something that was uh, uh, passive solar as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Heat uh, heating is not our major issue here. Cooling is, but we also mm -hmm. designed it so we had the cross ventilation. Most of our winds are from the east, southeast, and southeast, so it's decided to accept those. But it's also on the east-west axis. It's long axis, so we do get sun penetra solar penetration through the windows. 
uh, from October 15th to March 15th. Mm -hmm. And the overhangs are designed to, uh, to allow solar penetration during that time. In the summers, of course, we want the house to be in, the windows to be in complete shade, which yeah. they are. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we want porches to keep out the western sun. Uh, and that's why this is a, a shed porch. It's as low as we could get it to keep out the western sun, which gets brutal in the afternoons here. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can live uh, in the house, even without ace air conditioning. We'll, in the summer, we'll get up to about 82 to 84 degrees with the fast wall block. It's extremely comfortable. The fast wall section of the house in the winter is very warm. It tends to... I'm not. We have a stove in there. I hope we could use it. I hope it gets cold enough for us to use it, a wood stove. But uh, the fast wall block really uh, does a wonderful job of uh, retaining heat, and overall, it's very comfortable.